-hmm. So there's a pretty long program in the software. Okay. So it started with um, consolidated controls, which was more of a almost invisible device that enabled a, a airplane or enables an airplane to fly automatically. Yeah, right. That's one of the things. There are a lot of automatic things you can do for aircraft. Yeah, it's all so but under the right, hood. You don't really right. see it. And then number two, the the um, anim the um, animation. Unimate. Uh, Unimate rather um, is a fixed. Really, it, it's kind of fixed. It doesn't roam. It doesn't move. It's just locked in place and does a job in that spot. Okay. Same kind of a job that a human being might do with a welding gun and have to stand there and spot weld and spot yeah. weld. That's all he does. Okay. And so that's all a robot does. But right. The robot probably is precise throughout its shift. Yeah. And it might be two shifts. <laughs> okay. So then when you went to Helpmate, so now this was the first time that you had a roaming. Roaming, right. Okay. So it seems now a logical progression that once you saw what Helpmate does, which, by the way, you can see uh, these robots in hospitals all throughout the country. Right. Um, there being, uh, if you live in the Connecticut area, you could see one in the Danbury Hospital. Right. Um, and uh, they are in Europe and Japan as right. well. Um, so it's, it's only kind of a logical um, progression once you see a, a, a roaming robot to say, well, maybe this kind of robot can do more kinds of things. Exactly. And then you, you came to RoboCare, yeah. which is the, the baby you'd like to. Then. Well, remember that uh, the first moving thing was Helpmate. Right. And all it did was deliver things to different places, but didn't have arms. Right. Now take the arms and put it on a Helpmate, and now it's a roving robot that can, has a tactility at the end of two arms, and we put two arms on them. You can have one arm or two arms. And uh, they uh, can physically do things when they get to where they're going. Mm -hmm. And that means it's moving, and the arms can move, and the arms are strong enough and accurate enough so they can repeat the same thing it did before. Or you can integrate it with the eye, because the robot has vision. It might be used for navigation, but it can also be used to tell the hands where to go. Can it and recognize people? Recognize people, certainly. So if it's somebody that it's, um, it's programmed not to open. So, so something that the police use right now, right, to recognize people. Sure. But, uh, so it can recognize people, recognize voices. Okay. So if somebody knocks on the door that shouldn't be knocking on the door, and the, the robot can go to the door and say, uh-uh, this is not who I'm supposed to open the door for? Certainly. Okay. The robot can go into the refrigerator and pour you a glass of milk? Yeah. Make or maybe eggs. a glass of wine. A glass of wine. <laughs> okay. And the um, robot can make you some scrambled eggs? Oh, yeah. Sure. Sure. What if the, somebody moved the butter? Well, then the robot will complain. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I can't do this. There's no butter. Okay. And uh, it speaks English or any language you'd like it to? Any language you want to teach it. Okay. Now, um, the company, they have to come in and uh, queue this thing up. They have to program it. Oh, yeah. To your specific space. Point is the customer will probably rent this machine and probably won't want to buy it right off and uh, they'll say we want to rent it the same way I would hire a person who'd been to some sort of a training school for uh, human help. Mm -hmm. And uh, this what they get is a robot that's been to training school and some of its schooling occurs in your house mm -hmm. where your refrigerator is and where you sit and where you go to bed. Uh, so, and it also is going to be sensitive to sound. So if you call in the middle of the night, I want, can I have a glass of water? Sure. It'll get it for you. I wouldn't even think twice. <laughs> <laughs> the, will the computer say, come on, I, I need to get a wink of sleep too? Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't need to get any sleep as a robot. <laughs> uh, it's really incredible. Really incredible uh, prospect here. And you know that this is possible. From, from your experience in your other corporations and inventions, you know that this can be done. Well, it ha is being done as far as Unimate is concerned and is being done as far as Helpmate is concerned. The only thing that I've been trying to do is say that now that we know we can get it to move accurately and we know that we did its hands to do things physically, why don't we combine the two and make a servant out of it for uh, elderly 
handicapped person, mm -hmm. or someone who just likes the amusement of having a, a robot helper. Sure. If you want uh, to uh, be read to, if you if you like to hear an audio book, yeah, the computer can uh, recite the book sure. to you. Uh, that's an easy thing, right? Easy, you can do that anyway. <laughs> yeah, just pop a CD in it. Right. Um, and uh, the voice is a normal sounding human voice. It's not like a, right. you know, Danger Will Robinson, Danger Will, you know. Yeah, I know. No, it's <laughs> not, uh, you don't make a humorous voice out of it unless you want to. Oh, wh whatever voice you want. Yeah, right. So uh, the, the uh, person, the representative, the counselor, or whatever you call them, would come in and survey the house. Yeah. Uh, uh, queue up the computer for the physical environment. Um, and then talk to you about um, any kind of special... Well, you know, uh, we would start out with making this for someone who lives on one floor. Okay. Uh, first of all, if you're old enough, uh, uh, decrepit enough, uh, one floor is where you should live on anyway. That's what your doctor will tell you. you mm, right, try okay. Stay. Walking upstairs, which we have done with experimentally, it just isn't worth that much money. It takes about seven articulations per leg yeah. to get them to go to the right place for, and the eyes are seeing where the stairs are and all of that. Yeah. So uh, if you live on one floor, which is what's recommended by the medical establishment anyway, sure. uh, that's the first robot. Yeah, that and that would be the best foot to put forward, so to speak. Right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's sort of like the Russians, um, you know, instead of inventing a, a, a pen with ink that doesn't, uh, you know, go backwards, they yeah. use a pencil. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> So, um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense as it started there. And then it, uh, later on, if you want to add additional features like climbing stairs, then yeah. you go to that, that uh, particular thing. Um, now, um, Probably be better to put a little elevator in that house anyway. Yeah. Cheaper to put a little elevator in for the robot. Okay. And not only like that's the same thing that would be used by the person. Right. They couldn't right. use the stairs anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Now let's talk about um, uh, expense. How, how much will this cost uh, the consumer approximately? Well, it'd be an hourly cost, a rental an hourly, uh, maybe a, somewhere between a dollar and two dollars an hour. Wow, that's cheaper than, way yeah. cheaper than a babysitter. Yeah, right. I mean, we pay, uh, uh, you know, ten dollars at least yeah, for babysitting. Right. right. Um, and uh, okay, so you only have to rent it, and it would be uh, how much would it? I mean, I, I know it's hard to say at this point in time, but uh, how much would it be approximately in a in a, a range? Well, speculating, I think it'll probably cost if you're building them that lay at the rate of a hundred a month. Uh, that probably cost us between ten and fifteen thousand dollars each. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, you put them out, and you eventually get your money back and right. more. <laughs> right, right. Um, how many people would you need to assemble if we, uh, you know, to, to make this uh, robo-care come to fruition? What would well, your team have look have like? a, a workforce of people, I would guess, that if I look, look at Unimation Helpmate, what we use, to get uh, 100 a month of these, you'd probably have 50, 60 people. Okay, okay. Where uh, were these other uh, ones built? Where did it take you? You're from uh, originally from Bridgeport, Connecticut. You, I didn't mention. But that. I've been living in Newtown now uh, for 50 years. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, so they were built in Newtown. I mean, in in Danbury. Really. Th oh, you were building them in, in Danbury. Yeah, right. Wow, I didn't know that. We, um, I mean, such an important invention and so such an important thing happening right here in our own area. Yeah. Um, we, uh, what that's the um, company is, is is based there in in Danbury. Yeah, and uh, they they continue. What kind of involvement um, do you have in these companies? Uh, I don't have any involvement at all. The companies are sold. I've been retired uh, since I was seventy five, mm -hmm. and uh, so they're on their own. Mm -hmm. They have good people. They took took the people with them. Yes, yeah. and uh, so that the businesses go. They don't necessarily go because if the management of the buyer is too fixed in his views and attitudes of what should be done, then you get stagnation. Mm -hmm. 